It's hard to imagine spaces where time slows down and life melts into leisure where sands lie untouched by footprints of modern man, where winds roam free and rainbow fish glide in the deep. Yes, there are some corners on earth that are brushed by strokes of divinity, where scenic isles glitter like jewels scattered across satin seas, and countless experiences await the avid traveler. I'm almost back. This has been my dream to get back to the Andamans for so many years. Because when I come back here, I feel, I feel new again. I feel as if I've been born again. I feel fresh again, like I've come out of my own cocoon and I've become my own oyster once again. And there they are, the Andaman Islands, jewels of the sea. And the white coral waves look like eyelashes around these beautiful, beautiful green eyes. It's, it's just amazing. So calm and peacefully they sit there in the ocean and the waves lap against them, gentle reminders of the passing of time. With 572 islands, of which only 38 are inhabited permanently, there is a lot to explore. The two-hour direct flight from Chennai or Kolkata to Port Blair every day is the simplest, easiest and fastest way to get there. But if you have time on hand, savor a sea journey aboard a ship from Chennai, Vishakapatnam or Kolkata, a three-day cruise. The Andamans enjoy a tropical climate all year round, but perhaps the best time to visit is October to May. And when I stepped down here onto this tarmac, I felt an energy in my being right from the sole of my feet and through up to my heart and into my, into my mind. There's something about this place. It, it wakes you up. It makes you feel alive again. It makes you want to start life as a new adventure. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to share these jewels of the sea with you and possibly many, many new adventures. So join me. You encounter peace and tranquility the minute you step into the Andamans, as there is minimal traffic and chaos here. The capital city, Port Blair, often described as India's only warm hill station, bustles with activity. That at places the west and east coast are but an isthmus away, and at more than one vantage point, one may see the sea on both sides at the same time. This geological phenomenon has given the island some of the best harbors in the world. In the Andamans, the most famous, known to be one of the world's safest harbors, is Port Blair. And for this reason, is the site of the Union Territory's largest town and the headquarters of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Its undulating roads are lined by remnants of its historic colonial past. One catches glimpses of old buildings, a clock tower, a war memorial, a trail of shops at the historic Aberdeen Bazaar, Sagarika, the government emporium which sells a multitude of shell crafts, coral and pearl accessories, and the endless dance of boats and ferries along the ports surrounding rippling blue water. Port Blair brims with hotel options in luxury, deluxe and economy categories for travelers to choose from. Like Hornbill Nest, Peerless Resort, Fortune Resort Bay Island, Sinclair's and Champagne among many others. I am already at bliss 
with the tantalizing surroundings and the warm-hearted people who always welcome you with a smile. Your visit to Port Blair must begin right here at the Cellular Jail, which is now a national memorial. The Cellular Jail is truly the heart and soul of not only Port Blair, but of the entire Andamans. This heritage monument is a symbol of suffering and never-ending struggle for Indian independence from British rule. This mammoth piece of architecture stands silent testimony to the fervor of nationalism. Enter its premises and you are sucked into a time zone when history was being made. The British first began to use this area as a safe harbor for ships in distress. And then slowly, slowly it developed into the most infamous penal colony in the history of British India. The first gallows and the first jail were not set up here, they're set up at Viper Island. And then in 1857, the Great Indian Mutiny, otherwise known as India's First War of Independence, occurred. And after that, everything changed. The British retook control of India, and the jails on the mainland were overflowing with prisoners, in other words, freedom fighters. So the British needed a place where they could take the most dangerous freedom fighters and keep them in safe custody. So they thought of the Andaman Islands, and thus, on 10th March 1858, 200 freedom fighters, whom the British considered extremely dangerous political prisoners, were brought right here to the Andaman Islands, to Port Blair. And thus the saga of Kalapani, the saga of this cellular jail, began that day. Dr. Sheet Akbal is the curator of this national memorial, this cellular jail. And she's the person who knows the maximum about the history of this place. Am I right? You've done your PhD on this subject? <laughs> yeah, right. What was the exact subject of your PhD? Actually, I've done it on uh, the role of cellular jail in Indian, Indian freedom movement. The role of the cellular jail in the Indian, Indian freedom, freedom movement. movement. That's a very complex subject. Yeah. I think you found out very many interesting things. Yeah, a lot things. of interesting facts. The basic idea be behind the construction of the cellular jail was to uh, make the penal uh, character uh, in the initial confinement right. more penal in nature. More, more difficult, more, and difficult more strict, and more, and more vigil harsh. and strict. Now, we're standing here in a corridor like this. If you yeah. just go look straight down the corridor, yeah. all the three different floors, yes. right, and all the seven different wings, they all met here in this, this central yeah, pillar. It, that was a unique design. That, that's right. So they, when it was built, it had seven uh, wings, blocks, yeah. and uh, it was like a spokes of a bicycle. Exactly. exactly. And here you can, also you can see each uh, wing, each block faced the back wall of the other wing. That's amazing. One uh, prisoner's lodge in this particular wing, right. they should not communicate with the other uh, prisoners of that wing. Right. So made, they made it like that. And uh, the whole construction was in such a way that all entry and exit points to the cellular jail well, from was that point, from that right. point right. central tower. And it was here that some of the strongest voices of freedom were incarcerated by the British. Perhaps it was because of the strict punishment and hostile environment across the mysterious waters that exile in the Andamans was called Sazai Kalapani, punishment to the black waters. Patriots were locked up in these cells and forced to perform rigorous labor in the yard outside. Thankfully, their sacrifices did not go in vain, for the Andaman Islands acted as a precursor to India's independence, years before she actually earned it. It was here that Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, the head of the provisional government of Azad Hind, hoisted the Indian tricolor for the first time on 30th December 1943 on British Free Indian Territory. Can you imagine a grave foreboding day like this and the 
chimes from this very bell tower ring out the sad sad news to not only all the ships docked in the harbor but to all the residents of port blair that today three inmates were hanged in the cellular jail this six-sided central tower not only provided a perfect vantage point for security reasons it also gives an incredible view of the bay and here i am looking out towards north bay and and there is the famous lighthouse of north bay i'll tell you a secret if you look into your wallet and bring out a 20 rupee note and look at it very carefully what will you see that lighthouse yes on every 20 rupee note there's the famous lighthouse of north bay but the story of the andamans is not just grim history there is another side to it a side full of beauty a side full of people a side full of adventure a side full of nature north bay is the closest spot to port blair where visitors can snorkel the view is spectacular as the eye absorbs the entire palette of all encompassing blue the beginning of a beautiful sunset here at north bay it's a perfect place to come from port blair for snorkeling and you can hire a glass bottom boat and a guide and snorkeling equipment and you can see all the seven coral reefs just offshore here in north bay i felt like a child in nature's own aquarium i mean you don't even have to know how to swim it is awesome just look at this water no wonder the andamans are considered a snorkeling and diving paradise and when you're tired of snorkeling you can turn towards the hills and walk up to the famous lighthouse the view from up here puts you into a trance as you are mesmerized with the breathtaking surroundings a feeling that is truly heavenly we are heading to ross island the most high profile address in the indian seas during the british raj a name scented with history and tradition and power and mystique for this island one of the smallest populated islands in all of the andamans from 1858 until 1942 was the center of british power right here in port blair ross island had everything the british could ever want an officers mess a club a chief commissioner's bungalow a bakery a printing press even a, a way to distill seawater into fresh water it had everything and the british ruled from here for 84 long years it was so beautiful it became known as the Paris of the East. And then in 1942, as World War II was carrying on, the Japanese arrived here at Ross Island and they took over from the British. And here we have a grim reminder of their time here, a Japanese bunker. And today, the Indian Navy with great love and great devotion looks after Ross Island. Spanning roughly one square kilometer, Ross was a little Eden for British officers and their families for nearly 100 years. An erstwhile oasis of luxury built brick by brick by the bare calloused hands of convicts. It is said that the officer's mess on the seaside and the chief commissioner's bungalow on the hilltop were two of the most stunning buildings on the island. As you walk around today, it's hard to imagine that Ross was once the fabled Paris of the East. An abandoned stage littered with the props of colonial ruins engulfed by roots and vines. Ross is beautiful even in decay. Near the rusty remains of a boiler and a powerhouse that once generated electricity through steam, you find the ruins of a printing press, a post office, tennis courts, and a swimming pool. Imagine a cool, crisp December morning about 
75 years ago right here on Ross. Colonel Edison and his memsab come down from his bungalow with their cups of English breakfast tea to pick up something from this bakery. A delicacy, a confectionery, a bread loaf, hot cross buns or cakes or croissant made right here in this bakery, one of the best in all of the British Empire. Uphill, you find the officer's mess and the ruined Presbyterian church with its quiet poetic beauty. The remains of the cemetery and the path down to Farrar Beach just add to the mystical touch that this island brings about. The boat is ready, and now it's time to head to our next stop, Viper Island, just a short ride away. Viper Island, a sinister sounding name. And in many ways, this was a sinister island. For before the cellular jail was built, after 1858, when the political prisoners, in other words, freedom fighters, were brought to the Andaman, they were brought here. At the highest point of the island stood a red dome structure that served as the gallows. Nearly one and a half centuries later, the building is crumbling, but the solid beam has still survived. And here we are, an evening at Corbin's Cove, the most beautiful and the most accessible beach of Port Blair. The evenings and mornings here are absolutely beautiful. And there's an eatery and also a fantastic resort just off the beach. And there's an island just offshore, which is not named after a Britisher. This is Snake Island, home to many sea snakes, including the Latakuda. The Andamans are home to 46 different types of snakes, including 13 types which are found only right here, in the Andamans. We take a short boat ride from Chatham Jetty, where one of Asia's oldest sawmills stands to Bamboo Flat. Chatham, or Chatham as the local people love to call it, is actually the place where the story of Port Blair began in 1789, when Archibald Blair came right here to Chatham to set up a naval base. In 1879, the machinery for this mill was brought in from the mainland and from as far away as from England. And the mill was set up by the PWD department. And then in 1883, the forest department was established and they took over this mill. Once Asia's largest sawmill, this place still stands strong decades later. It hasn't only survived, but has also thrived. Just across from Port Blair, followed by half an hour's drive via Hope Town to the top, is Mount Harriet. Perched at 365 meters, Mount Harriet is the highest peak in the South Andamans and looms over the harbor like an old guard. It's a lovely, cool, crisp morning here, deep in Mount Harriet National Park. We're at a height of about 350 meters and it is not surprising that the British chose this place to set up their summer capital. Right now, I'm walking through Mount Harriet National Park and it's unbelievable to experience all this peace and tranquility so close to Port Blair. The trail snakes through a virgin forest alive with birdsong to the quiet beach of Madhuban 16 kilometers away. Fantastic. It's, trekking route starts here. You're at 1,193 feet. You go to Kalapatha, then up Mount Carpenter, which is 1,250 feet. You go all the way down to Madhuban Beach. You can come back here or you can turn along the seacoast via the lighthouse. Absolutely fantastic. 
the watchtowers near the forest guest house offer unparalleled views all around. Chidiya Tapu, literally Bird Island, the southernmost tip of South Andaman. It's a 30 kilometer drive from Port Blair, and the view is well worth the drive. The biological park will help us explore different species of birds, and a proposed canopy walkway will add further attraction to this beautiful landscape. You can swim at Munda Pahar Beach or catch a glimpse of Rutland, an island covered by such thick vegetation. It's called Kala Pahar or Black Mountain. Located across the McPherson Strait, Rutland is the southernmost island of the Great Andaman Archipelago. On the end of the sandy beaches are the literal forests. With the towering mahua trees as the most recognizable species, with its long, deeply cracked white bark trunk and luxuriant shady crown. They are especially thick along the west coast of Rutland Island and Sink Island, with the permanent twist of their crowns and branches to the landward side, offering mute testimony to their role as windbreaker. Just two hours from Chidiya Tapu is Sink Island, one of the top dive destinations in the area. Its exquisite corals, stunning marine life and clear waters with a visibility of up to 80 feet make it ideal for experienced divers. However, Sink's main attraction is the amazing sandbar that connects the twin islands. And what better place to discover it than the Mahatma Gandhi Marine National Park at Wandur, just an hour's journey from Port Blair. Spread across 280 square kilometers across 15 islands, creeks and open sea. The best way to explore this superb park is by glass bottom boats. Or diving at the Jolly Boy and Redskin Islands, which are open for day visits. After being enchanted with these visual treats, if you still crave for more, then you can head towards Samudrika, which is located in the heart of the city. Samudrika, or the Naval Marine Museum, has a vast collection of shells and marine creatures on display, while the Fisheries Museum showcases over 350 species of marine life. And adjacent to the Fisheries Museum is the Rajiv Gandhi Water Sports Complex with a range of water sports to choose from. At night, the complex sparkles with its twinkling lights that arc around the waterway like a pretty necklace. At the entrance of the Water Sports Complex, a memorial to the Battle of Aberdeen has been erected commemorating the war between the great Andamanese tribe and the British. The Anthropological Museum gives tourists a good overview about the prehistoric inhabitants of these isles. As I enjoy the various dimensions of the Andamans, I experience another one, the sweet symphony of the Andaman rains that bring about a sense of freshness enhancing the beauty of these islands. As we head from the south towards Middle and North Andaman on the Andaman Trunk Road, the rain seems to be accompanying us on this journey. While traveling along the Andaman Trunk Road, visitors have to observe strict forest regulations 
in order to maintain accord with the sensitive tribes living there. After journeying up the Andaman Trunk Road, we finally reach the Nilambur Jetty at Baratong, which leads you further into the Middle Andaman. From here, we're offloaded into a small boat that is taking us to some dark caverns off Middle Creek. where we'll enter the geological wonder of the Andamans, the ancient limestone caves. Now you can see and hear these raindrops falling down through the limestone. In a very simple way, that's how these caves were formed. A limestone formation which comes down from the top is a stalactite, and one that comes up from the bottom is a stalagmite. The air is cool and damp, and the gnarled surfaces and columns of the stalactites and stalagmites come in mind-boggling shapes. From here, we have another geological phenomenon to witness, the famous mud volcanoes of Baratang. Scattered in this complex are little mounds of wet earth bubbling over like miniature volcanoes. The mother of all these volcanoes is about 80 kilometers there to the east, far out at sea. That is Baranite, the only active volcano in all of India. We've just left from Nilambur Jetty at Baratang. We're going up these lovely mangrove-lined backwaters. You can see the mangroves in all different shades of dark green. And we're headed to Parrot Island, where every evening hundreds of parakeets gather. It's as if they're changing guards at their Buckingham Palace. It's a beautiful sight. Parrot Island which gets its name from its innumerable residents, the rose-ringed parakeets. And do you notice how the trees have been shorn of leaves and neatly pruned into a flat green overhead canopy by the parakeets? Large congregations of these birds come to roost, relieving hundreds of their counterparts who fly away to their next outpost only to return the next day. It is an amazing scene. Just when you think this is all, you are lured farther to Rangat, the headquarters of Middle Andam. Here you can stay at Hawksbill, the tourist bungalow near Cuthbert Bay. This has a fabulous beach, stretching up to Dhani Nalla to the north. It is the venue for another wonder of the natural world. As I approach Long Island, I am taken back to my childhood days which were spent in the lap of Mother Nature, an era that cannot be found in our cities anymore. It's 5.30 in the morning here at Lalaji Beach on the northeast end of Long Island. We got up at 3.30 this morning and took an absolutely incredible boat ride for about an hour just to reach here for this sunrise. And it's been worth every single minute of sleep that we lost. I'm on Lalaji Beach at Long Island an alluring mix of white sand and blue sea. Couldn't get any better. <laughs> You'll be surprised. 
Can you believe that I am the only one on this beach? Do you get a place like this anywhere else in the world? Andamans is one of the remaining places in the world that still has virgin beaches. Merk Bay Beach at North Passage Island is one such slice of heaven, where the only ones sharing the beach are tiny crab shells and other tiny creatures that the tide brings in. This morning we thought that Lalaji Beach was heaven. But Mark Bay in the middle of the day, it's paradise. Mmm. Clean, clear, refreshing coconut water. Emerald green seawater, blue sky, white clouds. And just look at this sand. Absolutely perfect. Where else but in the... <laughs> Antiman Islands can you get sand in your nose in a day like this. Mm. Our next halt is Maya Bandar, one of the most important and charming townships of the North Andamans with a natural harbour. The APWD guesthouse, perched on a hilltop near the jetty, offers a panoramic view of the Blue Sea. Karmatong Beach, just 14 kilometers away, is another favorite turtle nesting point. From Maya Bandar, we head to Diglipur and Kalipur, savoring the scenic beauty of the island. Then, we cross Austin Bridge, the longest bridge in the Andamans, and watch elephants engaged in lumbering activities. Elephants were first imported to the Andamans in order to work in the forest, and continue to be employed by the forest department until today. The mangrove forests form a distinct barrier of vegetation that's the first peculiarity of the Andaman forest to hit the eye. Bending low over the water so as to almost touch its surface, they complete the line of the forest in a clear, sweeping stretch from hill to sea. Another famous resident of the Andamans is the saltwater crocodile. One can spot saltwater crocodiles in the creeks as you pass by the mangroves. We finally arrive in Diglipur. Famed for its seafood and forest produce, Diglipur is the ambience of a rustic retreat, picturesque and overlooking paddy fields. Little wonder, it's called the Rice Bowl of the Andamans. The place, people and unbelievable natural wonders, all these things mesmerize you and transport you to another world altogether. Another must-see destination of Diglipur is the natural sandbar that connects the twin islands of Ross and Smith. This golden strip of land disappears under high tide, but when the water recedes, the marvelous view and the pristine stretch of powdery white sand connecting the islands etches an unforgettable impression on your mind. The 
Great Andaman Island is traversed by several parallel ranges that strike across it with several untidy exceptions among the smaller ranges. The highest point in the entire range is in the North Andaman Island from where the Saddle Peak rises to 732 meters above sea level. And we're going to trek from sea level to the highest peak in the Andamans, Saddle Peak. So this is about twice the height of Mount Harriet, which we went up near Port Blair. And I've been told from the top there's a fantastic view, especially out towards the east. We met other tourists on our trek and got a few useful tips on how to reach the top. We then continued on our trek with Sanjay, who was also our guide for the day. For all of you who are thinking of making this trek, it is a real honest to goodness trek. It's taken us more than three and a half hours to get here from the main gate of the National Park. But Sanjay here has been a tremendous help. He's inspired us, kept us going. But in spite of all of his help, we started out with about 10 people. We're now down to five. But we've just had a tea stop some lovely tea and bread and jam and that's given us, given us enough energy to carry on. But let me tell you, it's been worth every single aching muscle and every single drop of sweat to get up here on top of Saddle Peak and see the gorgeous, gorgeous North Andaman. Well, if you thought you were in paradise already, wait till we get to Andaman's main tourist haunt. Richie's Archipelago, with two islands that have catapulted the Andamans into the world's premier diving destination and leisure holiday spot. You can tell by the activity on deck here that we're about to, about to land. The jetty is about, say, 200 meters away. And as I was saying, there's something very special about Havelock. Of all the islands of the Andamans, this is its own peculiar charm. Maybe because of the beaches, maybe because such a romantic English name, Havelock, and so many of the names of the beaches, say like Radhanagar, a very traditional Indian name. So it's a lovely contrast of the old British glory and today's India. There are also very fine hotels on this island. Um, hotels of the highest quality. So it's a change from the forest rest houses where we've, been, where we've been staying to hotels here in Havelock. So all in all, it's going to be an absolutely fantastic next two days here. And if we're lucky, we might even swim with an elephant. Let's see. The island is peppered with a host of resorts and dive centers. The Barefoot Beachside Jungle Resort here is rated among the 30 best eco-resorts in the entire world. Havelock has over half a dozen dive centers, like Barefoot Scuba, Andaman Bubbles run by Wild Orchid, and Island Vinny's Dive India. Another one of my dreams, another one of my fantasies is about to come true thanks to the Andamans. As I dive into the water, I feel like I am entering a parallel world. A world where time slows down. I feel absolutely safe with the experts helping me out here. very, very different world where even the passage of time seems much, much 
more relaxed. And the fish, you think they'd be frightened of you, but the fish behave like friends. And uh, they just swim around you and you swim around them. And it's a wonderful experience. I'm going to go down once again. Havelock's most popular snorkeling and dive site is Elephant Beach or Hathi Tapu. A 40-minute boat ride from Havelock Jetty or a short trek from Radhanagar. Elephant Beach is a snorkeling paradise with an astounding coral reef and marine life. Named, of course, after elephants. Elephants that were brought here from the mainland many, many years ago. Of course, this island is called Havelock, which is a very English name. And we've got islands around us called Henry Lawrence, John Lawrence, Utram, Ross. But on this beach, what are the islands called? Radhanagar, Govindnagar, Vijayanagar. So on Havelock Island, we have all these beaches with very typical Hindu Indian names. This is the mystery and the magic of the Andamans. Most of Havelock's resorts are located at beach number 5, Vijayana. Perhaps no resort is as well located as the government-run Dolphin Resort. Cute cottages line one side of the spacious garden, which opens out to a view of the inviting water. Laze around, read a book, or if the view inspires you, write one. Backpackers opt for budget hotels and shacks, which also line the lanes of Havelock. Just a short walk away is the Govind Nagar beach. The sun lighting up the water and the sand beneath your feet brings about a sense of fulfillment in you. Can you believe this? Radha Nagar Beach at sunset. They say number seven beach is the most beautiful beach in all of Asia, according to Time magazine. We should know what they're talking about. Unbelievable. Walking here on the beach this evening, I feel as if my journey in the Andamans has almost come to an end, but not quite. I mean, this is perfection, absolute perfection, but the Andamans always leave you wanting something more, something even more perfect, something to ask you more questions, something to say, come back again. We're so happy you could visit. Radhanagar Beach at sunset. Life is perfect. The Andamans are fast gaining a reputation as a world-class sport fishing okay. destination. Run by a bunch of outdoor enthusiasts, game fishing not just provides deep sea fishing aboard their ritzy yachts, but also luxury island cruises. And no eating. Fishing is strictly by catch and release. And after having my fill of Havelock, I've decided it's time to drop the pace a bit and head for something quieter. Neil. Known as the vegetable bowl of the Andamans, Neil Island is a quieter, more eco-friendly tourist haven with unusually scenic beaches. Just when you think the Andamans have got nothing more to offer, you come to quiet and quaint Neil Island and it conjures up magic of its own. It's early morning, low tide here on Lakshmanpur Beach number two. We walk along the coral beach and come around a bend and what do we see? 
this amazing rock formation. Then there's Sitapur beach with its lovely caves, dazzled by the sun rays. And then there's Bharatpur beach with a stretch of lovely sand and beautiful seafood. And then in the evening, go to Lakshmanpur beach number one. And there, just enjoy the splendor of Sunset Point. Neil Island is like a country cousin of Havelock, but in its own ways, it is very, very charming. We're aboard the swanky Macruz that takes us on the fastest 55-kilometer cruise from Havelock to Port Blair. The view outside is breathtaking as the boat skims across the waters, cutting down travel time. Fifteen days. Fifteen days of traveling through these jewels of the sea, these Andaman Islands. Now I head back to the real world. Or maybe this is the real world, who knows. And what do I take with me? Memories? Some sepia tones, some fresh, some green, some deep blue, some etched in coral, some scented with lilies, fresh aroma of the sea. These are the memories I take back of long journeys through forests, and runs along sublime beaches, so many things. The people I met, the way they spoke of history, Ross Island, the Sailor Little Jail. I also take back with me fresh insights into human nature. But most of all, I take back a desire to return, to return to these jewels of the sea, to return to these Andamans as soon as I can. I think my uh, flight is being announced. I'll take leave from you. It's been a fantastic journey. Thanks for being with me. <laughs>